Hey there, CPO here, and in this video, we're going to ream some knuckles. That's right, I've got some reed racing knuckles. I need to open up that tie rod mounting hole just a little bit, and uh, I'll show you why, and I'll show you how. All right, so here's the problem statement. Uh, I have new reed knuckles, new uh, two and a half ton tie rods, uh, but I also have this special lockout washer slash seal from TMR Customs. Now normally the seal would fit down fairly tight and uh, hold everything uh, in place. However, I've got a little extra gap there because these reed knuckles are drilled, they're reamed at a little bit smaller than an OEM dimension. I'll explain that here uh, in a second, but I contacted Reed. They said originally they did factory holes for a factory tie rod end, and then uh, people demanded that they wanted to have the ability to put the aftermarket one tons on, so they opened it up to one tons, and then people with factory couldn't fit anymore, so they brought it down to factory, and then with all the variety of aftermarket tie rod end manufacturers, they made it a little bit shallower than OEM to guarantee a snug fit regardless of which tie rod. So depending on which tie rod you're putting in, you may or may not need to ream these out a little bit. And that sounds really complicated and it kind of scared the crap out of me. Um, but after doing a lot of research and studying and talking to people, I think it's a pretty simple process. So I'm gonna do that in this video. Uh, now I don't, I wouldn't normally have to, right? So for the tie rod to operate properly, I'm good, I've got a solid, strong mount. It's fully seated. I've got thread showing above this nut. So everything's good there. The problem is just this lockout. Uh, it needs to be able to be held in place by the knuckle and it's not because uh, I've got too much space there. So if I had a standard boot, like on the drag link, then it would uh, probably be a non-issue. So that's why I'm gonna ream these out. And uh, yeah, first, let me get this off. I'll show you some measurements between the factory um, JK OEM knuckle and the reed knuckle just so we can see the difference and then I'll figure out my plan moving forward. So this guy should fit all the way down flat along the top. But again, once it gets misaligned, it tends to want to pop out and the problem is the knuckle should be holding it from getting misaligned that much and popping out, uh, but it's not. So that's why we've got to ream that. All right, first I want to get a measurement of the small hole here on the reed knuckle. And that's 0.6275. That is about a hundredth smaller than the factory. Actually, I've got a stock knuckle here. It looks like I'm getting about 64, uh, 65, somewhere in that range. Yeah, yeah, 0.645. So that explains why this tie rod isn't seating as low as TMR Customs expected it to is because I'm a little ways away. So what I'm gonna do is ream this out and I'm gonna do it using this guy. This is a one and one half per foot uh, taper and it is a standard GM one ton taper. It's an automotive taper. It's the same taper that's already in here in the reed knuckles. It's the same taper that's in the factory knuckle. It's just the depth is gonna be different. So how far this reamer, the cone, goes into the knuckle determines how wide the uh, smaller and the wider hole are. So uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is take this and ream out and make that a little bit deeper than what it is right now. The common rule of thumb from people that do this a lot is it's half the speed at twice the feed. So nice and slow with a little bit of pressure. So I'm gonna try and do this with a cordless drill just so I can keep some consistent pressure on it. And I'm gonna go nice and slow. 
and I'm gonna measure often. And I'm gonna keep it lubricated. See, I'm at 6460 just like that. It doesn't take a lot. So let me clean that off and see how that does. So unfortunately, the only way to know for sure is to torque it down and then see how my gap ends up. Boy, that's pretty good right there. So basically all I did was bring it back to OEM specifications, pretty close, and then you can see how that washer now fits and restricts the, uh, the flop. So yeah, that's all it took, a couple of seconds with a reamer on a drill. And you can see here the amount of metal that got removed, not a lot, but enough to make a huge difference on the fit and assembly. Now, unfortunately this tool, this bit, this reamer is expensive. Uh, you know, you can expect to spend 80 to 100 bucks on one. Uh, if you can borrow one, all the better. The problem is I don't like borrowing things like this that are consumable. You know, things that are sharp that'll get dull when you use them. I just don't like borrowing those things, so I bought this. So anyway, so yeah, let me go uh, ream out the other knuckle and we'll be ready to button up this install and uh, do our alignment. Oh, and since I'm done messing with this, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot of red thread lock under there. Even though this is a lock nut, the nylon has been sort of abused by assembly and disassembly a couple of times. So now that I'm confident everything's where I want it, I'll just thread lock it for the final assembly. And yeah, I need some orange paint now. All right, I'm gonna shoot for 64, 60, the same I got last time. So I'm starting out at 63.20 on this one. Little WD-40 just to uh, clean this thing up a little bit. Make sure it's pushed all the way in there straight. And really, if you can go slow as you can, you're just basically shaving. You're widening an existing taper. actually easier if I put it on the stop. So this is out after reaming out the driver's side and then reinstalling, you can see, I've just got a little bit of room here to spin this around, uh, but it's enough that it's gonna prevent that from flopping and also will retain some, uh, some grease in there. So anyway, that's awesome. So that is how to ream out your knuckles.